Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming back at you with the second half of this full tournament that I'm bringing you guys where I'm playing the same deck. It's this furnace control deck and I'm playing with a log. A log in this deck in place of I think where I used to have, oh I don't even know what I used to have in the log place there. Maybe because I still have zap and poison. I'd have to look back to see. I didn't have fireball because I don't carry poison and fireball. But either way, I really like the log in this deck. So what we're going to try to do here is win first place in this tournament. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, I can win first, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do with this deck. So, what we're gonna do is kind of hop right into this match here. You can see I'm already started out here. I'm gonna counter this uh, Royal Giant with a mini P.E.K.K.A. and play some guards too, just to distract those minions because I can't have them getting on my tower. So, what we're gonna try to do with this deck is try to control the tempo of the match. You can see here I was able to just finish off those minions there, so I'll let his miner go ahead and pound away at that right tower. I want to kind of focus on this left tower. He kind of misplaced that cannon there, so I feel pretty good about this start here. He does not have a, oh, he does have a Royal Giant, so I messed up on my Furnace placement there. When you know your opponent has a Royal Giant, you don't want to place your Furnace that high up towards the center part of the, uh, the map there, because a savvy Royal Giant player will play his Royal Giant right on the other side of the equator, so to speak, and uh, instead he's not doing that. He's playing the Royal Giant way back there, so uh, I kind of like that. It gives me time to prepare for it, even though it does give him time, obviously, to recoup some elixir to have a nice push behind that Royal Giant. So we're not going to spend anything right now. We're going to put the uh, the put the mini P.E.K.K.A. down. Let's zap here just to kind of buy us some time, and we'll put the guards down. So that was actually a pretty good defense on my part there. Uh, it could have been much worse. So what we're going to do is continue uh, with the miner here in the left, and we're just going to let our miner kind of chip away at that left tower and we'll make another furnace. And I did it again, guys. I did it again with the furnace, but I guess it doesn't really matter because I don't think he's going to be uh, targeting my... Yeah, he's not going to put the Royal Giant in the middle of the map, even though we do end up losing the furnace pretty early on. Uh, I don't know why. I keep thinking that he's not playing the Royal Giant uh, or does, doesn't have the Royal Giant, I think, because he has the, uh, the Miner as well. Uh, but he's playing the Royal Giant Miner deck, which is actually coincidentally one of my favorite decks for ladder play. But uh, I don't love the Royal Giant in... Uh, tournament mode because the reason I don't love Royal Giant in tournaments is because uh, without the four minute match I mean there's a big difference between four minute matches and six minute matches as I play this princess over here I'm probably gonna lose this furnace as well I'm gonna go ahead and put drop the mini P.E.K.K.A on the Royal Giant but I'm gonna have to poison here as he's doing a lot of damage to my right tower I'm gonna zap here try to buy me some time can we pull off this win it looks like we're gonna be able to pull it off I'm gonna put the furnace here just in case and then I don't think he has anything yeah that's gonna be a win so that was good a little sloppy towards the end there though and he's he's laughing he, he knows that he, he could have had me there that was very close so let's see what place we're in right now okay so we're, we're down uh, we're not even in the top 10 right now so I thought we might have been in the top 10 but you know what I left off last episode actually losing a match so I've lost two matches so far in this tournament so it's pretty tough to win first place in a tournament when you lose more than two times in these one hour long tournaments so basically we have to go undefeated this episode guys so we'll see what we can do here so let's see what this guy's playing interesting a spawner deck maybe maybe he has royal giant you don't see too many spawner decks anymore mostly it's uh, if they do have barbarians it's maybe a sparky deck or a royal giant deck or maybe even a giant deck we'll see what you know another goblin hut now so this is actually going to be good for me because when we're playing the Furnace and the Poison, that's basically like a perfect counter deck to a spawner deck. So we're just going to continue going slow here. Again, control me. Oh, a Lava Hound. Didn't see that coming, guys. This is very interesting here. I, I have not seen a spawner deck with the Lava Hound, but it's definitely a, uh, it could be a successful deck, I guess, right? Because, you know, you're going to have those continuous troops pumping in behind that Lava Hound. That's what it's all about. I'm going to go ahead and zap these pups here, and we should pretty but pretty well be able to mitigate the damage done by that hound. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Uh, that's the thing about these live recordings is I can't clear my throat or do redos on audio takes. So we have two princesses now on the board in a second here. I need my guards to combat this prince here, but I'm going to actually, yeah, I was thinking, I was debating using log instead, but I'm going to sacrifice the furnace there. And uh, back to what I was saying earlier about Royal Giant, and uh, I swear I didn't totally lose my train of thought. <laughs> what I was saying about Royal Giant and 
how I like him in tournament play versus ladder play is I think there's a big difference in gameplay when you're looking at a full six minute tournament. I'm gonna go ahead and poison again, by the way. And then you look at a, uh, a four minute ladder match. Basically, you can be really aggressive with the Royal Giant in a regular match, and you can usually get the one or two tower advantage by the time the three or four minutes is over. But it's much tougher to, in my opinion, it's much tougher to withstand that uh, that advantage over an entire six minute match when you're going against one of these control decks. Look at all the value I'm getting out of that poison right there. And I'm not sure if I articulated that, 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 that well, to be honest with you guys, about the Royal Giant, but I'm just seeing that not a lot of success with the Royal Giant in tournament play, versus in uh, ladder play. So uh, this match is looking pretty even right now. I kind of talked a big game about me having the perfect counter deck, but you know what? He's doing pretty well. Uh, this poison, though, is really eating him up here. I'm getting a lot of damage done to that right tower with the poison and the fire spirits, and the poison and the fire spirits are continuously putting a uh, putting a wrench in his uh, big... Uh, spawning pushes at me. So let's go ahead and continue to kind of do a little bit of damage at a time here with the miner in the log. You can see I'm using the log pretty aggressively just to chip away at that right tower and we actually came up with a pretty convincing win there. He didn't do a lot of damage to my right tower. It was an interesting deck though. I had never seen that deck and I actually like seeing these different types of decks. Oh look at that. We moved all the way up to four. This is awesome guys. So now we pretty much have to not lose and then uh, hopefully just climb our way up into first place and just hold it and then uh, we'll hopefully get first place with this control deck. So let's go ahead and make another furnace here in the middle. Uh, by the way, guys, not sure if you knew, this is totally, uh, totally has to do with absolutely nothing, but as we're waiting for him to make the first move here, I stopped playing Pokemon, guys. Not sure if you guys caught my two Pokemon episodes, and it seems like everybody is switching over, or at least covering Pokemon at the same time, but, I mean, it's really a combination of issues. Number one is I genuinely got a little bit bored of the game, and obviously I'm not in the age demo necessarily, and I'm probably not in the age demo, by the way, no one's playing in this match we're just gonna wait the full three minutes enjoy guys enjoy but uh yeah i'm not in the age demo for pokemon i'm probably not in the age demo for clash royale either but uh i don't know what it is but it just didn't i kind of found it kind of stale after a while i don't know why but uh i guess some people could make the same argument about clash royale so certainly nothing against the game or, or those of you who enjoy it but for whatever reason just didn't wasn't feeling pokemon go and more importantly or just as importantly i'm gonna poison right up here against those barbarians and i should do a decent amount of damage damage and kill the barbarians here but more importantly I just don't have the time to continue to, to continue to cover Clash of Clans which I still really enjoy even though I think there are a lot of issues in the game right now and in the community overall but uh, I, I still love Clash of Clans and I still love Clash Royale even though I know there are a lot of issues going on in the game right now so I'm covering both games and uh, and I just don't have time to do Pokemon Go on top of those games plus working full time and all that other good stuff that you guys already know about me so that's that's why I'm not playing Pokemon Go. I know a few of you have asked in the comments, so figured I'd kind of touch base with you guys there. And speaking of issues in the game right now, I, I've done videos covering tournaments and how I feel about them and stuff like that, but I do think that uh, there's probably going to be a, a come-to-Jesus moment, uh, forgive the pun, uh, but a come-to-Jesus moment for the Clash team coming up soon. Uh, because, you know, there's been a lot of negative feedback about tournaments and more importantly about legendary drop rates and just the grind it takes to max out in this game and my hunch is the team will actually address this pretty soon I mean you can see that in the app store they've fallen from number one which was to be expected I mean a game starts out and everybody's interested and then of course people start to lose interest a little bit or find new games and then you start to trickle down the audience size a little bit it's still up there in the standings I think it's still top 10 at the time of this video but you can see how people kind of want more I think they're expecting more from tournaments and uh, and Supercell does take a lot of the summer off so we haven't seen anything new, both in terms of balancing and in terms of uh, anything fixed regarding all the negative feedback that, uh, that the Clash team has gotten, to be honest with you guys, uh, from uh, the forums and social media and everybody else, you know. I think people are really frustrated. I mean, you can just listen to Chief Pat's video. By the way, you can see my play has gone incredibly down, my, my level of play, now that I've been talking about something other than the actual match. Uh, just barely hit that 
Princess there got lucky. I'm going to go ahead and counter with the Mini P.E.K.K.A. here against this Royal Giant, and we'll rebuild the Furnace. But uh, Chief Pat's video was absolutely great, and some people say he really roasted Supercell, and I don't see it like that, to be totally honest with you guys. I think he's just a passionate guy. He really cares about the game, and he cares about a fair play. I mean, he really cares a lot, just like I do, about win trading at the top, and I think it's, you know... I don't want to be too hard on people over a video game. I don't think these individuals are bad people, the people who win, trade, and cheat at all costs. But it does say something about you when you choose to cheat at a game consistently where people are throwing thousands of dollars into. It's not just a game. This is also a, a monetary operation. So people should actually care. Supercell, namely, should actually care about these people, you know, tinging the game that so many people invest so much time and money into. So I can see where Chief Pat is coming from. I mean, the guy drops like 10 grand on a max deck and then he can't even compete. Now, obviously, he chose to spend the money and I'm sure he's not complaining about himself personally. He's just complaining because he wants a fair level of playing field across the board to everybody. And then on top of the win trading stuff, which is just embarrassing, to be honest with you. Shame on Nova, whoever the clan is, who has 20 people in the top 20 uh, globally and they're basically just trading, win trading all day, every day. I mean, that's not fun. And it's, it's just corny. It's just pathetic, to be honest with you. But whatever. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then it's up to Supercell. It's not really their issue, uh, Nova's issue here. It's up to Supercell to do something about it and, you know, put their money where their mouth is. If they want a truly, uh, a truly competitive game that everybody's on equal playing field. And then speaking about competitive game while everybody's on an equal playing field, as I almost lose my left tower there, that mini P.E.K.K.A., uh, I think it's really important to address the free-to-play uh, aspect of this game. Now, Obviously, Clash of Clans is also a free-to-play game where, where money goes a long way in the similar aspect, but it's different. I mean, Pat mentioned this in his video, but in Clash of Clans, you know, I just find the general feel of a Kingdom Empire Builder game where you build your defenses and it takes time and it takes days. I find it apples and oranges when comparing to a deck building game where you level up your cards and they're instantly leveled up. I just don't think it's fair to compare the two because some people have said, you know what, you pay a lot of money for Clash of Clans too, what, where's your problem with that? Is that, why is that not an issue in Clash Royale is? And I just think it's not fair to compare the two games simply, simply stated, and by the way, I'm really slacking on this game here. We'll focus on the game in just a second here on this match, I should say, but I do, am doing a lot of damage to that right tower, so I'm, I'm liking that, and you notice most of the damage I'm doing to that right tower is just chipping away with the with this furnace. That's why I love the furnace, and I'm just going to go ahead and log this princess here. He keeps playing the princess, and he knows I have the log, but I keep chipping away. I keep taking down the princess with the log, and I like it too because I'm doing a hundred uh, damage to that crown tower for every time I uh, I land. I take out the princess with the log. So back to my point there about free to play in Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. I just think that it it it's kind of feels weird, honestly. Even when I'm recording YouTube videos, like the first half of this uh, this tournament, and I'm sharing a match where I just happen to be matched to go up against the level eight. It just doesn't even feel fun. It doesn't feel like you guys should enjoy it either. Uh, but for whatever reason, these poor level 8s, you know, they join these tournaments and they think they're going to, you know, have at least a semi-shot. But truthfully, they have no shot. Honestly, uh, this is not the fix that I would recommend. But I think that tournaments probably need to uh, not include level 8s at all because they're at such a disadvantage. I don't see how a level 8 could win. I'm sure it's been done, but certainly the majority, the vast majority of level 8s can't stand a chance they don't have max uh, rare cards uh, at to tournament standards or anywhere close to so I don't I don't mean to just you know complain about the game constantly guys I'm not trying to be super negative here even though it probably comes off that way I actually really like Clash Royale 2 and I really love the game and I just want to see it succeed obviously I want to see my YouTube channel succeed too I'm not gonna lie I mean I have vested interest in this I want to see the game be good and I want to see everybody enjoy it so that is uh, and I can't believe we pulled out the win as I was totally blabbing my head off off about the state of Clash Royale, but guys, uh, we're going to kind of focus on the next game, ma next match here, because we need to make sure we keep winning here so I can hopefully get first place. So 13.055, I've seen him before, he's a pretty good player, so we're going to have to concentrate on 
on this match, and then maybe on the next match, we will uh, talk more about the game and the state of the game. So this is what I'm going to try to do here with these longer format episodes. I know the first video I did on this tournament, I kind of just did play-by-play -play the entire time commentary, basically from start to finish for a half an hour. This time, I think I'm going to switch it up a little bit and do some commentary, do some play-by-play, -play, but also do some, uh, a little bit of, you know, state of the game, feel it, talking about how I feel about the game, etc, etc. So, you can see, uh, trying to get something going in the left here, but not having any success at all, so, uh, well played on his part there, that was a pretty good, uh, stymie to my little push on the left. So what we're gonna do now is maybe chip away a little bit at this left tower, the miner here, and just play the miner and that's it. We'll have the zap ready, but I like to do that when I have the furnace down. When I have the furnace down, I like playing the miner all by himself, and then I know that if they don't counter the miner, then there's gonna be two fire spirits coming out the tower. That's gonna be over 300 damage, and if they do counter the miner, I'll, because I've only used the miner and not like a mini packer or something behind it, I'll have plenty of elixir to counter whatever he's coming at me with. So I'm gonna play the uh, mini P.E.K.K.A. right now, for example, in the princess, and you saw that. I was able to get maybe like four or five or 600 damage off his left tower, and he was able to get only one or 200 off my left tower in exchange. So that's a little like secret to this deck. It's not even a secret, but it's a little tip to this deck is sometimes when you have the furnace down, just use the miner on that side. Let him get a few hits in. Let hopefully both of the fire spirits go ahead and hit that tower. If they counter it, all the better for you because you're going to be at the elixir advantage and you'll be able to defend and then hopefully get a counter push going the opposite way. So that is kind of the mindset that I have using this deck when I have the furnace down. Speaking of furnace down, I need to get my furnace down right now. I don't. I feel very uncomfortable with this deck when I don't have my furnace ready. I'm going to zap this uh, these minions and put the princess down right here. Oh, that was really close on that princess there. That could have spelt trouble there. A little mistake on my part. I'm going to put the guards down in poison. We'll, hopefully we'll get somebody to that tower. Doesn't look like it though. He's pretty good at defending whatever I have going on. I love putting the furnace down right when they have minions or a minion horde coming at me or spear goblins or anything low hit point, high DPS because uh, that really uh, is, is beautiful. Having those first two fire spirits go directly at stopping his push and you can see there I played the P.E.K.K.A. behind it. So, so far so good I guess. We're, we're pretty much neck and neck at this point. I'm going to poison again. When you're going against somebody who's playing a very similar deck towards you, it's all about being aggressive with their poison spells and your minor. You, you can't stop and rest on your laurels and go on defense. You have to make sure you're continuously chipping away at their tower like I'm doing because other than that, you're just going to lose in the time. You know, they'll wait the whole three minutes of overtime and you're going to lose again. Now, this is trouble right here. I'm going to zap and I have, oh boy, this is not look, looking that great here for me. I'm going to log here, and then I'm going to poison if I can't. I'm going to miner, actually. We'll log in miner. This is going to be big, guys. This is it, I think. We're going to poison. We'd, oh, we got it. Whew, that was close. That was close. I told you he's a good player. That was a pretty good match there. It's probably the, the most challenging match I've had and, and actually won so far this uh, video. So this video, oh, I'm in first place. Yeah, buddy. Okay, awesome. So let's try to concentrate here and try not to lose. I want to hold on to first place here. I have not ever shared a full tournament from start to finish with you guys on this channel. So I really want to win it. I really want to come in first. So let's go ahead and uh, make a furnace here and see what he does. But again, he's being a pretty savvy player and he's waiting for me to make the first move. I love making the second move and then deciding based on where they put their first card, what direction or what part of the map I'm going to put my furnace on. So you can see he has Sparky. I always give the sad face when they play Sparky no matter what. I don't know if it's a mental thing, but I just want them to think I'm really super scared. Uh, so I always, always give the sad face as if I'm shaking in my boots. So I use the, the uh, I'm going to use the log here and then I'm going to use the guards against Sparky and that should be enough to take down Sparky at least. And then I won't have to worry about the rest. So Sparky's going to get a shot on my furnace. That's not what we wanted to have happen there, but it's okay. He doesn't do a lot of damage to my tower, so that's, you know, that's what it's really all about, defending the tower against Sparky. So, Sparky's pretty easy to counter with this deck, guys. We really have two big options to use against Sparky. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the guards, and we also have the zap spell to reset his fire timer. So, we can use guards as our number one weapon, for sure, because obviously they can take an entire hit off Sparky, and we're gonna make sure we keep guards open for the next Sparky, and here it is already. So, Sparky is such a slow-moving troop that we're going to stay aggressive on the left, and we're not 
not going to worry too much about the Sparky right now on the on the uh, on the right. So we're going to use a poison against these barbarians here and make sure we get the tower as well. We have the guards up, so we're ready on the right. And he's playing a mini P.E.K.K.A. here. So we're going to go ahead and play a mini P.E.K.K.A. in Zap against his Sparky. He's going to get two hits and on my tower. So that was actually really good on his part there. And we kind of dropped the ball there. We should have played the mini P.E.K.K.A. a little bit lower than right directly on that Sparky. And we should have zapped a little bit later than we did. But it's okay. We actually get a couple hits of our own on that right tower. So that was actually really good there for us. We're going to rebuild this furnace. And I imagine he's going to go ahead and get another Sparky on the board. Uh, so let's go ahead ahead and chip away at this right tower the whole idea here with this deck is you always want to be playing something causing him to react so I played the princess and he reacts immediately with the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the royal giant so I'm going to be able to counter the mini P.E.K.K.A. and the royal giant and he's not even going to get one hit okay he gets one hit on oh two hits on my tower but was I wrong there but look at this I'm able to get the miner in there on this left tower so we are looking uh, pretty good right now so I'm going to put the princess over here in the log over here on the right and and hopefully the reason I'm using the log over here on the right is basically to go ahead and, uh, and give my furnace time to summon another fire spirit I'm gonna get this left tower down with a miner and that looks to be game set match so good game good game another win and we're in first so I like this let's see how much time is left I didn't even notice on the first uh, the first little thing there so only uh, 11 minutes left so that's about three matches or so I don't think I'm gonna stop playing here because we those two losses last uh, video last episode I'm gonna need to make sure I keep playing I don't have enough of a lead to just stop playing totally and that would make for a really crappy episode so we'll go ahead and uh, this guy looks to have a lot of cups he must be in like second or third place so let's make sure we win this one for sure guys so what is he playing here? He has a wizard coming, a wizard giant deck. So, you know, the meta right now, I'm sure you guys already know this, but it's 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 a lot of giant decks and a lot of minor decks. That's pretty much what you're looking at on these top decks. I mean, once in a while, you'll see a Lava Hound deck. Once in a while, you'll see a Royal Giant deck or a Sparky deck. But primarily, and speaking of Sparky deck, there's another Sparky. So if you, those of you who always ask me, how do you counter a Sparky? You're going to see it here too. Uh, I'm hoping that that Poison does enough damage to the Sparky so he'll be able to get one shot by my tower. So uh, one thing about Sparky is if he's low on health like he is right now, the tower will hit him uh, three or four times before he gets one shot off on your tower because he has that warm-up thing that he does so if he's low on health and he's by himself not to worry there's nothing to worry about you don't have to drop troops there and if you do drop troops you're gonna lose them because he will instant fire against them so it's better to just let your tower take out Sparky if that's the uh, that's the case I'm gonna use my miner over here to distract this mini P.E.K.K.A. and then I'm gonna go ahead and zap and uh, the mini P.E.K.K.A. will be down I have the guards in the back there so this push will be uh, not too successful on his part. He does get a few hits with that uh, that giant, and giants are so dangerous, guys. I mean, if you get a giant onto your tower, even if you have a lot of troops down to defend like I just did there, you're, you're going to, you know, he's going to get a few hundred hit points off your tower. So you always have to be cognizant and aware of where that giant is and make sure you have an answer. You just can't leave a giant, even if he's only at 25% health, you can't just leave him there on your tower without putting some sort of a defensive counter down. So now we're just going to go ahead and just kind of lay back and continue again. This is the chip deck, right? We're going to continue chipping away at that left tower, playing defense when he plays this uh, mini P.E.K.K.A. giant combo. I love guards, by the way. The more and more I play guards, the more and more I love guards. This deck is great, and one of the reasons it's great for me is because it has all the cards that I love in it, and that's... You know, that's a unique thing. Not everybody likes the same cards. Now, we're going to get a lot of damage here on this left push. We actually get the tower down. That was actually really, really good there. Uh, so, you know, I always advise people. A lot of people ask me, what's your favorite deck or what's the best deck or what deck would you recommend for X, Y, or Z? And my answer oftentimes is truthfully, you know what? You know the answer to this better than I do because what you need to do is find the cards that you genuinely have a lot of success with and that you really enjoy playing and then use those decks in a way to get as many of those cards in the same deck as you can without actually ruining the meta of the deck so basically you don't want to just stick a, you know a giant skeleton and a lava hound in there or a golem and a lava hound and say those are my two favorite cards you want to make sure you can actually get a deck 
that can be successful, but use a lot of cards that you actually enjoy. I really love Poison, and I really love Zap. I really love the Miner right now. It's hard not to love the Miner right now. And I really love uh, Furnace, and I, I really enjoy Guards. So those are my favorite cards, and they're all in the deck. I mean, the one favorite card that I have that's not in this deck is Ice Wizard. Uh, I really love Ice Wizard defensively, but I feel like Mini Pekka is just so much more valuable, and that would really be the spot. Uh, Mini Pekka or Princess would really be the spot that I would put my Ice Wizard, and I can't see removing the Mini Pekka because it's really my best defensive weapon. Uh, so I can't remove the Mini Pekka, and I think Mini Pekka is a little bit more valuable in this deck defensively than a uh, than a Ice uh, Wizard would be. So we're playing somebody who's not too high in cups right now. I don't want to take them uh, for granted, though. So we'll, we'll make sure we're, we're on our A game here. And as we play this game, we'll talk a little bit more about tournament play and uh, in balancing in general in Clash Royale. So we talked a little bit about win trading. We talked a little bit about what I feel the problem with legendary drop rates are in the game and how it's a little bit too much of a grind for free to play, uh, play players. We're playing the Trifecta deck, by the way, here, guys. It looks like, at least. When they start off with a, uh, a, a Valkyrie, and I should have mentioned, by the way, in the current meta, Trifecta decks are definitely an option as well. So uh, that's probably the third or fourth deck that you can have success with in the current meta. So I got my Mini Pekka to the tower there. This is going to be really nice here. Really nice start to this match by, uh, by yours truly. So we get the right tower down, and now we're just going to sit back on our, on our laurels a little bit and uh, kind of just chip away at this left tower with a princess. So getting back to balancing a little bit, uh, you know what? The thing is is I think the game isn't as far off balance wise as a lot of people think and there's really one I have one source for my uh, for my theory there and that is if you look on the forums or social media you see people complaining about cards or even reddit you see a lot of people complaining about X Y or Z being too OP and when I put out a video on a trifecta deck people complain that it's too OP when I put out a video on a royal giant deck people complain that it's cheesy and too overpowered when I put out a video on a minor deck Deck, people complain about it. A giant deck, people complain about it. And genuinely, when you look at the forums and they're complaining about Sparky 24-7, and you look at YouTube and social media, they're complaining about hogs all the time. You know, when they're complaining about this a big of a variety of cards, that kind of actually says the game is probably pretty well balanced. But I just think that there needs to be continuous tweaks. I actually really like how the game started out with continuous tweaks and it would keep people changing cards and keep things new and fresh and it's not so much like clash of clans where the nerf buff cycle gets to be really costly for people and it seems like a, a total money grab in clash of in clash royale you're kind of leveling up your cards based on what's available in your shop or based on whatever you're pulling randomly from chests so i actually don't mind having uh you know having a buff and a nerf here and there based on the the usage of cards i do feel that Royal Giant might be a little, little bit too overpowered, and I feel like the hidden buff to the Miner last update when they decreased the deploy time from 1 second to 0.7 seconds, I feel like that was a little bit much because the Miner was already so powerful. Uh, so I think the balancing is actually pretty good in the game besides those two things, and we're going to win this match pretty easily there, so that was pretty good too, so we're still being first place, hopefully, as long as my opponents aren't winning more cups at the same time that I'm winning these little few cups here against a lower guy, so only 11 cups off that. I would still have first, but it's not by a huge margin. So let's see what the other guys are playing. A Lumberjack deck, very interesting there, Lumberjack deck. Let's go ahead and continue playing here, but so... As I was saying about balancing, I think the main issue here isn't so much... Let me see what this guy's playing, by the way. And Royal Giant deck, I do want to get a feel for what these top players are playing, so I kind of have a... I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to go up against in the last few minutes here. This could be my last match here. So, uh about balancing, I think the game is all right balanced. I think there still needs to be tweaks, but I'm not going to sit here and complain about the balancing right now. I do think that the big issue is is tournaments, and I, I put out a whole video on tournaments. I put out a whole video on how I think that tournaments are were pretty much a bust at this point. I actually am in the vast minority where I like the format to, to, a, to a large extent because I think that if you go into brackets, especially brackets from the beginning, I think the final eight turning to a 
bracket system would be really cool. I actually really like that idea. But I think that if you start a bracket tournament, I mean, you run into a lot of problems in, as far as waiting for people to be ready, as far as, uh, you know, there's just a lot more downtime in a bracket system. And there's a lot of more luck involved. When you're playing consistently for an hour plus, generally the best players or the players with the best cards, they tend to gravitate towards the top of the, uh, of the leaderboard. But when you're playing in the bracket system, it's totally random. And some people might actually like that. By the way, talk about a really, really bad loss to that tower right off the bat there. Man, I need to concentrate on this match. That was awful, guys. That was probably our, our worst start so far. We're going to have to really concentrate on this match. Uh, but I will finish off my point. I think the main issues uh, with the with the bracket system is there's a lot of downside and a lot of variability in terms of the, uh, the level of play and the luck factor. However, I do think, like I said, it would be really cool to see the final eight go into a bracket system or the top eight after an hour go into a bracket system, a one-off tournament for the real champion. But more importantly, be the biggest issue for me with tournaments right now is the rewards. I think they're they're trash. No offense. I mean, I don't want to sound overly, again, I don't want to, I'm not that guy who's just going to sit here and flame uh, Supercell or the game for, you know, unjustly. But I think that the, for the amount of time that you put in, I understand that for the amount of money you put in, the rewards aren't a bad deal. But the amount of time that you put in for an hour plus to get eight cards to get what you're pulling out of a silver chest that's uh, no there's no wonder that people are down on tournaments i mean the prizes just aren't there right now so at the very least they need to change the prizes and and certainly change the fact that it costs money to create a tournament it should cost gold to create a tournament because you're paid gold if you want it to cost money to jo to start a tournament that's fine but you should also be paid money if you win the tournament that's it should be the same currency you shouldn't be paying uh gems for example and by the way awful at paying attention to this match and uh, commentating, obviously. But you know what? We're doing a lot of damage to that left tower. I think we might pull off a comeback here, or at least a, a, a quasi comeback. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, all I need is a miner or a poison on the left tower. Actually, a log might take it down. 65, let's see if we can do it. 65, oh yes. Okay, so don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. So now we still have a long way to go in this match, though. We need to do a lot of damage to this right tower. I need to keep the furnace up because he has a hog rider basically coming at me 24-7. It seems like, I don't know what he's got going on with his elixir there, but he has like 18 hog riders every minute coming at me in the right lane. So let's kind of try to focus here. I have a nice little push going on over here. Uh, the minion horde is down. Look, the mini pekka, the mini pekka gets at my battery. <laughs> oh my god. This is called an ash meltdown right now. I can't speak. My battery's dying. My phone's gonna die. Uh, okay, so let's try to just calm down here. What the heck just happened? I was like, the mini battery... Alright, so uh, let me let me finish off my, my this conversation after this match is over. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so hopefully you can understand. I'm pretty excited about this match. I didn't think I'd even come close to winning. I just need to get the princess on this tower and I'll get it. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Zap this hog. And this is going to be it, guys. We're going to... Wow, that was a really good comeback. Wow. I thought he had me there when he took down my left tower. And I don't blame him for being angry. And I would have been angry if I had lost that one. Because because of how lower he was in cups than I was, I would have been way out of first place had I lost that match. So let's try to get... Uh, oh, the tournament is over now. We are officially over. So hopefully we got first here, guys. It's just going to depend on what goes down in this match here. We're rooting against uh, that one guy. We're, we're rooting against that one guy. So as long as he doesn't win, we're totally good for first place. If he does win, we still <laughs> might have it. I think we still will have first place. So hopefully this is it, guys. Hopefully we did it. We didn't lose at all this video. That was awesome. We, we lost two in the first video. So we ended up going something like, I don't know probably around 13 and 2 record or something like that I don't know I, I lost track of the exact count of uh, matches but something like that but anyway while we watch this match and root hard for that one guy by the way that one guy looks to be going down here only 30 seconds left and not a lot of hit points on that left tower and uh, interesting dra a deck that Dragon's playing here, or Dragoon is playing here. Uh, let's see what he does here. Let's see. He doesn't have any direct damage, though, to get that tower down. He just needs, like, a, you know, a few hits on that left tower, and we've got it. It's golden. But as we watch the, the rest of this match, I'll just finish up my thoughts on the game. Uh, I love the game. I'm going to continue covering Clash Royale for a long, long, long time, similar to Clash of Clans. However, I am disappointed in, uh, in the state of the game right now. I, I want it to be fair play at the top. I want it to be fair play. I can't believe he just lost that match. That one guy just won. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. 
Uh, let's see what he's got here. Oh, no! I can't believe that just happened. I just fell into second place because of that match that I thought he guaranteed. I thought for sure he had. Oh, no! Oh, boy. I can't even concentrate anymore, guys. I am bummed. I thought for sure that was awesome. That I didn't, obviously, I had no clue I'd win the tournament, or I thought I'd win the tournament. But I was like, what a perfect video this is going to be. I came in first on a two-part tournament video. Awesome. And then it looks like I came in second. Womp, womp. That's why we need a bracket system, guys. This is why we need a bracket system, Supercell, because I lost. Uh, joking, joking. But, you know, it would be cool. But anyway, uh, legendary cards, free-to-play free players... Uh, fair play at the top. Those are the biggest things I'm looking at right now. Improvements to tournaments. Those are what I want to see from the game. We need to have a, a, a little bit less of a grind in the game for free-to-play players or players who just don't spend thousands of dollars. It's not just about free-to-play players, right? It's about people who just spend, you know, $20 here, $20 there. It would still take you like 10 years to max out the game if you're spending like $20 a week. So, uh, guys, it looks like we're going to come in second place here. I hope you enjoyed the format of this episode where we talked a little bit about the game we talked a little bit about uh, the matches you can see here a lot of wins a few losses one three crown to end the uh, last video and uh, we'll go ahead and look at the final results here good job guys thank you for everybody who came in the uh, in the tournament here I do host tournaments daily guys on Twitter at clash underscore with underscore ash I'm very interactive and chatty there so be sure to follow me there and I'll see you on Twitter and thank you so much for staying to the end of this episode if you made it all the way to the end say hashtag true fan and i'll give you some love in the comments guys thanks so much for tuning in and as always take care guys